you must have recently heard in the news that Ukraine is desperately telling the United States to put pressure on Israel for giving military aid. And what does Ukraine want? They want the Israeli missile defense system, the Iron Dome. And you may also know this, just like India, even Israel has decided not to be part of this war between Russia and the West. And I must emphasize that Israel stands with Ukrainian people and with the West. However, for operational and regional consideration, uh, I don't see us sending uh, offensive military equipment. It is not that Israel has not helped Ukraine. Even they have privately donated aid on humanitarian ground. Israel has also given the necessary military intelligence to Ukraine. I think Israel has also built a field hospital in Ukraine. Israel has also voted in the United Nations General Assembly resolution against Russia. So overall, if you see, emotionally, Israel has sympathies for Ukraine. But then they have made it very clear that they don't want to be part of this war. Now, this is something that the Ukrainian president is not liking. And that is the reason he is desperately complaining and cribbing to his master so that you do something about it and give orders to Israel to be part of this war and fight from the Ukrainian side. If you have noticed, I think from past one month or so, Russia has launched deadly air assault on Ukrainian cities. They are using MiG, Sukhoi fighter jets, Iranian drones, which has actually destroyed many of Ukraine's key assets. Now, because of that, Ukraine has started pressurizing Western nations to give them more air defense system. And then everyone is aware of the fact that Israel as a country has great experience with air defense. Israel's Iron Dome is in full demand. Many countries have eyes on it. This state-of-the-art military equipment has more than 90% success rate intercepting incoming rockets and Ukraine wants it. But then Israel has straightforwardly said, we are not going to give it to you. And please don't drag us in this war. Now there are some strong reasons behind why Israel does not want to stick out its neck for Ukraine and give what they want. And by the way, this decision by Israel has invited criticism, especially from the Western countries. Many have even called it as betrayal. Personally, I do not see it as a betrayal. But then you also have to understand that Israel counts itself as a Western democracy. And it very much depends on American hegemony for its security and survival. Israel being the only Jewish country surrounded by so many Muslim countries, if at all tomorrow all hell breaks down, then obviously Israel expects United States to step in. Even United States will do that. So that is the kind of relationship that exists between United States and Israel. Then now why is it that Israel is not stepping up and supporting the Western countries in their fight against Russia? Let me give you the reasons one by one. Please listen to it carefully. It is not at all in Israel's national interest to make an enemy out of Russia. Why? Simply because currently the Syrian airspace is dominated by Russia. Although there are other foreign forces, that is Turkey, United States, who routinely operates in Syrian airspace, but then the major part of it is dominated by Russian Air Force. Russia has also mounted its anti-axis area denial weapon devices in most of the locations in Syria. That prevents enemy to move freely in Syrian airspace. In fact, Russia has also boosted the Syrian air defense forces. Russia has deployed MiG-29 and MiG-31 fighter jets with hypersonic Kinzhal missiles. Plus, Russia has also deployed long-range Tu-22M strategic bombers to its air base in Syria. So anyhow, the Syrian airspace is currently dominated by Russia. And if you have watched my video on what is happening in Syria, you will learn that Turkey, United States and NATO forces, they exist only in the northern part of Syria. But Israel lies on the southwestern part of Syria. And all of the southern and central part of Syria is under the control of Syrian government, that is Bashar al-Assad. And the Syrian government is a strong ally of Russia. Now the next thing that you have to understand is, who is currently a big threat to Israel? It is the Lebanese Shia militant group Hezbollah. And who supports Hezbollah financially and militarily? It is Iran. So any kind of arms shipment that has to reach Hezbollah or other proxy forces in Syria, it has to move through Iraq and then Syria. Therefore, Israel needs Russian cooperation for conducting airstrike and bombing arms shipment to Lebanon from Syria. Have you heard about the recent Israeli airstrike in April near Syrian capital Damascus? And that too it was done during daytime. Where do you think Israel must have conducted this airstrike? Obviously, it came from southwest. It cannot go from here all the way to Turkey and then enter from northern part of Syria. And I've also said Russia dominates the Syrian airspace. And then they have also installed anti-access area denial devices. And Israel has been conducting such airstrikes in Syria since 2017. So it cannot be possible if there was no cooperation between Israel and Russia. 
If at all Russia gives a free hand to Israel in Syria, only then Israel can conduct air strikes. And then you also must be aware of the fact that Russia has Jewish population. So Israel wants to ensure that there is no problem in immigration of Russian Jews or any kind of ill treatment. Because initially when this Russia-Ukraine war started, Israel even voted against Russia in the United Nations Security Council meeting. At that time, Russia had strictly warned Israel to stay away from this issue. The Russian government even threatened that they would shut down a Jewish immigration office in Moscow if at all Israel interfered in this war. So these are the reasons. One, Israel needs Russia's cooperation in Syria in stopping arms shipment to Hezbollah. And the second reason is Israel does not want their own people living in Russia to face any kind of backlash or hindrance. And then there is also a third reason. Before I tell you the third reason, I want you to think about it. Here is a list of weapons that the United States has supplied to Ukraine so far. Has the United States given its state-of-the-art defense system to Ukraine? I'm talking about Patriot surface-to-air defense system, or any fighter jet, or any of its deadly drones. Although there were negotiations, but United States has denied it. And they have also said to Ukraine's President Zelensky not to beg for these high-end US weapons in public. I guess you must have heard this news back in the month of June, when Zelensky was demanding all kinds of weapons from the United States, the US President Joe Biden lost his temper and shouted on him and said, show a little more gratitude. So anyhow, United States has given wide range of military weapons to Ukraine worth $19 billion since January of this year. But they have not given their state-of-the-art defense system or any other aerial weapon to Ukraine. Because there are two reasons behind it. One, if at all it falls in the hands of Russia, they will reverse engineer it and they will figure out its weakness. And two, now this might seem very weird to hear, what you have to realize is that United States air defense system is not the best. While United States military industrial complex spends a lot of money on producing offensive weapons, but they don't invest that much on air and missile defenses. In fact, there are reports on the internet, you can read about it. The US Patriot missile defense system success rate is quite low. It is performing very poorly in Saudi Arabia. The Patriot defense system is not able to detect and stop Iranian drones and cruise missiles that are attacking Saudi oil sites. Even in Ukraine, those same Iranian drones are being used. Do you think United States is going to supply their defense system to Ukraine and then make a fool of their hardware one more time? In January 2020, if you remember, Iran had fired 19 ballistic missiles on a US base in Iraq. United States was not able to defend because they did not have any missile defense system. And then this is also one of the reasons why India bought the Russian S-400 system and not the American Patriot. Even US had offered their defense system to India. Its success rate is low and it is very expensive compared to Russian S-400. So anyhow, United States has not provided their state-of-the-art defense equipment to Ukraine. In fact, everyone is aware of it. Similarly, even Israel is aware of it. Now, Israel's Iron Dome is the best in the industry. Its success rate is more than 90 to 95%. Now, I want you to think about it. If at all Israel give their Iron Dome to Ukraine, and if at all it falls in the hands of Russia, there is a very high chance that the working mechanism of Iron Dome, one of the best missile defense system in the world, and its detection capability will fall in the hands of Russia and can potentially be passed on to Iran. If Iran gets it, then the militant group Hezbollah will benefit from it. Why do you think Israel was talking to United States when Russia started importing Iranian drones? Because it is not at all in the interest of Israel if Russia gets closer to Iran. If you look at this Russia-Ukraine war, the whole war is happening on Ukrainian land. It is not happening inside Russia's land. So these Ukrainian forces, they are using these weapons that have been sent by the Western countries. They are using it recklessly. They are using something, then throwing something, then they are moving to some other location. Again picking up something, throwing it somewhere, again going to another location. These weapons that have been collectively sent by so many countries are going to end up in the hands of criminals and in the black market. And Europe will have to face the consequences. Crime rate, terror activities will increase. All because of Ukrainian forces. So why would Israel lose its state-of-the-art defense system, which has been successfully protecting its country for so many years? It is a concern for Israel because think about it. Let me give you an example. The Palestinian militant group Hamas and the Lebanese militant group or you can say Iran's proxy group Hezbollah, every now and then they aimlessly fire thousands of surface-to-surface -surface rockets and missiles towards Israel's populated areas. And the Iron Dome is able to intercept most of them. Actually, if you see, that is what gives the regular Israeli citizens confidence to still live in their houses and not worry about what's happening outside. Because the Iron Dome is taking care of it.
Now, suppose Iran gets to know about the working mechanism of Iron Dome, how it functions, how the radar detects multiple threats at a time. Don't you think Iran will use that information to develop its missile capabilities that can circumvent Iron Dome's detection capability? This way, if you see, it will reduce the effectiveness of Iron Dome and it will increase the ability of Hezbollah, Hamas and other Palestinian Islamic Jihadi groups to kill Israeli citizens in future conflicts. So, if you look at it from Israel's perspective, this country is already surrounded by many terrorist organizations who constantly fire thousands of rockets and missiles every now and then. Now, do you think it is in Israel's national interest to interfere in Ukraine war and give away its state-of-the-art defense system that can potentially fall in the hands of the opposite country and from there it will turn around, come towards Israel and bite its own back? So these are the reasons why Israel does not want to stick out its neck for Ukraine and get involved in this war. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.